What's up, guys? Name of Pitts here. We're back for the second week of Around the County. And the way this broadcast works is we're going to talk about key Calhoun County teams in basketball and wrestling, um, building up to the baseball softball season where we'll start a full swing episode. It's going to be strictly on baseball softball. But today we're going to talk a little bit about football as well. That's right. If you haven't heard the Calhoun County 1A through 3A, all first team and second were dropped this week with honorable mentions, so I'm going to release that to you. And after that, we're going to go straight into Calhoun County Basketball Tournament. We're going to talk the seeds. We're going to get predictions. Hey, we've got some wild boys games. I'm telling you, it has been a lot of mixed match shakeup this season. And we've even got wrestling. They start the AHSAA Dual Tournament this week, and you've got, well, none other than the Alexandria Valley Cubs, who are going to be competing for Class 3A. But you've also got Ramburn Bulldogs out close to the Georgia border about 30, 45 minutes from here. And we're going to talk a, bit, a little bit about the season that they're having behind Coach Harlem. So, again, it's been a great year for these uh, teams, and it's going to be great. So, again, let's get straight to things. We're going to start off with the 1A through 3A All Calhoun County football team. If you see me looking down on my phone, uh, ignore that. It's straight uh, notes, I should say, that I have on my phone. Um, because it's a whole lot easier than printing the papers and going paper by paper, you know, like I normally do. So just bear with me, guys. So we're going to start with the offense. At quarterback, he is from the Piedmont Bulldogs. He is a senior quarterback, Mason Mahomes. Notable stats from Mahomes. Again, I got these off the Aniston Star, Joe Medley. Thank you. And it's a notable 99 for 166 passing with 1,471 yards and 16 touchdown passes with 135 rushes for 521 yards and 12 rushing touchdowns. So that's your starter for the 1A3A football team. And running back, it's the Weaver Bearcats senior, Shamar Speaks. This dude, if he had stayed injury-free this season, he would have had so many better stats. Heck of a uh, player. The MVP, the Sacks Wildcats, Jonathan Cobb, was also a senior making a big decision here coming soon. And he had over 13, 39 yards. He averaged 6.9 per carry, 21 touchdowns, six catches for 72 yards, and two touchdowns. But how about the powerhouse behind him at running back, Dominique Thomas from Ohechi. He had 15, 1,585 yards, 26 touchdowns, six catches for 136 yards, and two touchdowns. So that's our running backs. We move to wide receiver. We've got the big man, D'Angelo Foster from the Piedmont Bulldogs. And for anybody that's watching from outside of here and well, I know there's many from Georgia or buddies that watch every week, and I appreciate you all around. This dude right here is, uh, if you don't know Piedmont, it is a powerhouse that has made the state championship about three of the last four years. They are about unstoppable. Um, but Pete, Randolph County has proved that wrong, and several other teams here lately. But Piedmont is still, I mean, you can't, they're a top team right now, and there's just no other way to go around or about it. And they've got some freaking killer dudes, beasts, and this dude, D'Angelo Foster, Practically won the Randolph County game there late with that big catch. So he had 695 yards, 12 touchdowns. How about a Modric Elston from Weaver? He's also a wide receiver. How about the Donahoe Falcons, the little 1A, bringing in a guy tied in, Will Nelson. That's my buddy right there. Glad to see him on the list. He had 24 session for 350 yards, 5 touchdowns, 2 rushing touchdowns, 50 tackles, 7 sacks, and 15 tackles for a loss at tight end. Our offensive line, we've got our very own Welburn Panthers, Dylan Gilbert. How about Ohechi's Briley Hill? Jalen Childs from Sachs. He is committed to Troy Trojans. Caleb Ogle from Sachs. And Carson Brazier from Pleasant Valley. The athlete on offense is another Donahoe Falcon, Rod Elston, who is a running back. And Colt Neese, who is a running back from Pleasant Valley. TJ Ferris from Piedmont. And Welburn's very own Calvin Spinks, who for a sophomore had a nice season. He had 103 carries. 934 yards, 13 touchdowns, 7 catches, 104 yards, 32 tackles, and 2 interceptions. As we move to our defensive line, it's built by the anchor, the man himself, Mario Thomas. And if you're a Georgia native, you're going to love this cat because he's coming out to Kennesaw State and he is ready to do some damage. And he's going to be anchoring our defensive line. He's a senior. Listen to this. 67 tackles, 4 sacks, 12.5 tackles for loss, and a safety. The big man got a safety. This dude is a heck of a dude. He should have been in black and white, but he wasn't. I'm just kidding. But the dude is a heck of an athlete committed to Kennesaw State out in Georgia. Bryson Ingram for Piedmont. How about Sean Smith? He was in the running for Defensive Player of the Year. And so he, I, th I actually think he won 1A through 3A. Or no, he came up short to Jalen Sims of Fultondale. But Sean Smith, man, what a cat. He had 
135 tackles, 32 tackles for loss, 11 sacks, 2 forced fumbles, 1 fumble recovery, and 1 blocked punt. As we continue on our defensive line, we've got Colby Nelson of Pleasant Valley, Caleb Allison, Weaver, he's got a decision to make coming up with a lot of things. He had 42 solo tackles, 122 assists, 15 tackles for loss, 8 sacks, 68 carries on offense for 634 yards, 14 touchdowns, 26 catches for 482 yards, 5 touchdowns and 1,116 all-purpose yards for a fullback. Linebackers Alex Paris from Pleasant Valley, Cam McCollins from Ohatchee, and Matthew Thornton from Piedmont. I agree with Thornton, no doubt. But the uh, other two, I mean, I don't know about uh, Alex Paris. No offense, but Jet Smith, our very own linebacker, made all-state first team but didn't make all-county first team in linebacker? Question mark. But, hey, it's not my calling. Defensive back, Grayson, can't knock off Alex Paris. He's uh, another great linebacker for the Raiders. Uh, uh, phenomenal season, normally going 1-9, 2-8, and, and, and went 6-4, uh, 5-5, and, five and five, if I'm not mistaken. So give him credit, but just I don't know how somebody makes all state but not all county. Grace, especially in the same region. Same Grayson Allward at defensive back, Robert Gaines for Weaver at defensive back, Carl Myers for Piedmont and Davion Dukes are defensive athletes. Okay, now we're going to throw him in here to make up for what we just missed. Jet Smith who's a sophomore, he's our Welvin Panthers quarterback and linebacker. He had 142 tackles, two forced fumbles, three fumble recoveries, one interception, 128 carries for 742 yards, 12 touchdowns, 21 for 41 passing, 410 yards, two touchdowns, and he averaged 38 yards per punt. Another athlete's Caden Jenkins from Piedmont. Our punter is Josh Patel from Donahoe, who's notable at 38.6 yards per punt. And our kicker is Anthony Corneo, I guess, I don't know, and listen to this guy, he's a senior, he, uh, he was 58 for 59 on point after attempts, 5 for 7 on field goal attempts, and he had, I think 48 or 50 was as long this year, he had 44 touchbacks. Our second team on offense is led by Hall Billings of Donahoe, Kent Tresfite, and TJ Gibbs on the offense, and the defense was Amante Tice, Tyler Rigsby, and Isaiah Woods. A lot of good players. I don't want to mention them all because we've got to get to the basketball, the good stuff. So y'all bear, <laughs> excuse me, bear with me real quick while I flip over here to some basketball. So again, that is our football. Ooh. Well, if you missed this past Tuesday night, the Aniston Bulldogs. Their boys win a second game in two nights after defeating White Plains 55 to 40. So again, and oh, also Steve Smith won uh, coach of, of the county for 1A through 3A. So uh, y'all bear with me. And uh, again, I did tell you. So let's continue moving forward with basketball. Aniston uh, had a big week this week, really. So we're gonna see real quick as soon as we get to there. Here we go. Let's go, guys. Let's talk about it. All right, so we went over a little bit last week. Went over the seeds, um, who's playing who kind of deal, but we're going to go back into it. We're going to start with, well, the Oxford boys basketball team who is sitting at the top as the first seed, and the Anderson girls look to be, well, the class of a tournament seeking a challenger, I should say, no offense, but there isn't a team in the county who can even provide, I think, Aniston a competition in this tournament. And it's shown the past couple of years, I'll tell you that, they took our Welburn girls out two years ago, limb by limb in the championship. When we had one of the best years we've had under Coach Morgan, who is now um, gone, so and Vanessa Contessa Carter, who left and went to college and stuff, so a yeah, big year. But again, Oxford boys and Aniston girls will be the top seeds when we start this Saturday at Piedmont and then we'll move to Jacksonville State University's Pete Matthews Coliseum. So last year Oxford boys were running for Sacred Heart and the Aniston girls won. So again it will be played at Piedmont mainly due to JSU playing against Tennessee Tech Saturday at home. So the rest of the tournament will uh, move. But the boys seeds were as follows. One Oxford who is 14 and 4. Sacred Heart was the second seed. They're 11 and 9. Aniston was 12 and 5 as the third seed. Piedmont was fourth at 10 and 2. White Plains was fifth at 11 and 6. Weaver was 12 and 4 at the sixth. Jacksonville was 8 and 7 at the seventh seed. Alexandria was the eighth seed, 9 and 6. Sachs was the ninth seed, 3 and 9. Jacksonville Christian was the tenth seed at 11 and 4. Ohatchee 7 7 and 11. Donahoe 5 7 and 12. Pleasant Valley is the thirteenth seed at 3 and 9. Faith Christian was the 14th at 6 and 8, and unfortunately our Welvin Panthers were 15th 
as we're still winless 12 games in. The girls' seeds were as follows. Aniston girls were 13 and 3, Sacred Heart are 14 and 2, Weavers 11 and 5, and round out the top four is Jacksonville 10 and 5. Oxford's fifth seed, they're 3 and 14. Maybe that's a top over. White Plains is 8 and 10, Alexandria 4 and 11, Pleasant Valley 10 and 7, Piedmont 6 and 6, Ohatchee 6 and 8, Jacksonville Christian 10 and 5, Faith Christian 5 and 6, Sachs 2 and 12, Welburn 1 and 11, and Donahoe 1 and 9. So the top four seeds do get buys into the quarterfinals. So seeds five through nine also get first round buys. So um, let's, let's see how let's see how it goes. Let's, let's see what happens. The boy fit the boy field does appear to be the deepest it's been in years. Is there's been uh, White Plains beat Oxford, but then Piedmont beat Weaver. I mean Piedmont beat White Plains, and then Aniston beat White Plains. Weaver beat White Plains. Well then Piedmont beat Weaver. And then Sacred Heart beat Aniston, Aniston beat, I mean, it, it's just all woo, woo, woo. So, let's talk about it. White Plains is the fifth seed, and uh, I think that's a good thing for Oxford because they want that rematch after what happened the first game of the year. And if you don't, you guys don't know what happened then, well, Oxford and White Plains played. Simeon Shadricks, he uh, transferred to White Plains from Oxford. And he had a three-pointer um, and a free throw, and it was pretty tight. White Plains ended up upsetting one of the top teams in 6A, at the very beginning of the season. So Zondrick Garrett, who returned for after a year in prep school, and uh, Eugene Leonard, and then a uh, talented recruit, Jaden Stone, leads Sacred Heart, Antonio Kite. I mean, a uh, highly improved Aniston team. And so it's just going to be a big tournament. Again, Sacred Heart did beat Aniston earlier in the year. Um, Biello Foster and Piedmont beat, beat uh, Weaver, and then Weaver beat White Plains. So it's going to be great. So when you look at all the teams, especially the top 8 to 10, it is going to be a tight race. Um, great games. It'll be a great tournament. And Alexander, you got Joe Tucker and some good cat, young cat out there um, who, who's making some noise, and they're just trying to – they beat Piedmont earlier in the year. So there's no telling what's going to happen. And they're all the way down as an 8 seed or 9. So so let's see what happens. And then we look at the girls' side. I mean, you've got Aniston riding high-scoring guard, Elisha Dudley, and senior Tania Foster, one of the team's four six footers. The four eight Bulldogs beat Park Crossing, Carrollton, Georgia. Um, I just, I mean, they beat some highly taught teams. Sacred Heart, which moved up to 2A this season, has six foot center Ayala Foster. Again, she should be in black and white, but she moved to Sacred Heart. So, <laughs> and guard Maya Harris looking to be a top challenger. Weavers led by reigning 183A County Player of the Year, Kaylee Cortez. They beat Oxford in the Aniston Star Cleveland News Tourney. So you look at all of them records, and you've got a lot of in between teams and a lot of mixed teams. So it's going to be good. So let's go into the games. Let's make some predictions. And let's start with the girls. This Saturday at Piedmont, number 13, Sachs versus number 12, Faith Christian. Neither one of these teams are very good. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm not going to beat around the bush. I'm going to be straight up. So I'm unfortunately going to have to go with Faith Christian. Because Sachs is just, well, they're not good. <laughs> so I'm going Faith Christian. Then at noon, you've got our Welburn Panthers and Jacksonville Christian Academy. Our girls have one win. JCA has, uh, Callie Cub is averaging about 28 points per game in 1A. We're 3A. Um, so I think our girls pull an upset, and I think they get the win over a 1A JCA. Ohatchee versus Donahoe. I think this one's easily going to go Ohatchee's way. As we move to <clears throat> Monday at Jacksonville State, again we are in we are in the girls. Excuse me. As we move forward, we got number eight Pleasant Valley versus number nine Piedmont in girls action. I'm going to have to go with Piedmont. As we've got Oxford versus. Faith Christian, if Faith beats Sachs, I'm going with Oxford. White Plains versus Welburn, if they beat JCA, I've got to go um, with Ari Rosario in that offense. If then Alexandria versus Ohatchee, if they beat Don Hope, and you easily got to go with Alexandria. Then you flash forward to Tuesday, next Tuesday at Jacksonville State. Jacksonville Golden Eagles versus the Oxford Sachs Faith winner. Um, going with Jayville. Aniston versus Pleasant Valley Piedmont winner. Going with Aniston Girls. And then Wednesday. Excuse me, and then next Thursday, well, you'll have to hear next Thursday because we're not going that far, but we will have um, semi-final or uh, quarter-final matchups 
that week. So let's move to the boys. This is my favorite right here. We've got Pleasant Valley versus Donahoe starting Saturday at Piedmont. Donahoe come back from a high win over Ramrod Bulldogs this past Tuesday. Pleasant Valley is not that great. I actually think that I think that uh, I think that Donahoe is going to squeak by by a little thread and beat Pleasant Valley. I think uh, Ohachi rolls over Faith Christian. Welburn and JCA boys, I mean, Welburn's got the potential to beat these guys. It just depends on how they show up. They really do. As a 15 seed, this could be the biggest upset of the first round for them. Uh, I was talking to a couple players the other day. They're real um, hyped about it. Think they can get their first win of the season. And, uh, you know, I, I'm going to ride with them. We're going to go and see what happens. So I'm going to go with Welburn in another upset. Both our boys and girls upset JCA in the battle of JCA versus Welburn. Let's move forward. Move forth to Monday at Jacksonville State. You've got Alexandria versus Sachs. Give me Alexandria. Give me White Plains over Pleasant Valley Donho winner. Give me Weaver over Faith Ohatchee winner. Give me Jacksonville over Welburn JCA winner. Move forward to Tuesday. Piedmont versus White Plains, Pleasant Valley and Donho. Woo! Let me tell you. Hmm. I think White Plains. No, 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 no. I don't know. I'm a. Uh, I don't know where to go with this, to be honest with you guys, because Piedmont's beat White Plains twice. Twice or once? I think twice. Stats don't lie. I guess I'm taking Piedmont over White Plains. Oxford versus Oxford beats them. And then we move forward to Thursday. We'll talk that when it gets here. So that's a little basketball county seed tournament. Um, whatnot's going on there. So let's flash forward to wrestling to end things today. So let me get there real quick. By the way, Oxford's Clay Webb, Class 6A player of the, or lineman of the year. Y'all bear with me one second. I'm trying to pull up the bracket for the ASSAA. Duels. Our Weldon Panthers have senior night tonight at home versus Saks Wildcats for wrestling. So that's going to be a big night for all them boys that have been wrestling. Um, Matthew since seventh grade, who me and him came up in seventh grade wrestling. <laughs> so, um, it's going to be huge for them. Excuse me, my throat's been dry. I've been sick, so I'm trying to bear through and dig deep through this thing. So again, let's talk wrestling and then we will close things down for today. There's only three teams from Cowan County competing in the AHSAA dual tournament. Um, again, that it's a duels tournament, but then the year sectionals and state is what matters individually. Where a lot of uh, a lot of cats, you know, you don't you like ACA. You've got Jackson Elder as one of the top in the state at 113. And then there's only like four of the wrestlers on his team. So they're obviously not going to make it in a dual tournament because you have 14 weight classes. But you take Jackson and put him in sectionals and state, he's going to place top three because the Cats are good. So, so the state dual tournament does start um, tomorrow night, or tonight, excuse me, tomorrow night on Friday. It starts tonight. There's some dual meets tonight. So let's talk about it. Let's get in it. Let's get in 1A through 3A. I mean, excuse me, 1A through 5A. And then we're going to talk 6A. We're not going to talk 7A because... Let's be honest, guys. There's nobody around here in 7A in it because Gaston City um, has Samuel Jaggers, and that's it. So let's go into the bracket. Two County County teams featured. Um, excuse me, one featured in the 1A through 5A bracket. Somebody who is used. So let's start at the very top of the bracket. We've got Arab versus Jasper. Arab. I mean, Arab's the top team in the state, and they've been that way for about mm, six, seven years now because they haven't slowed down. I don't think they've lost the state championship in probably four or five years in wrestling. They're in a powerhouse. Corner versus Scottsboro. Poor Scottsboro because they have such a good team, but they always fall in Arab's region, so they can never beat Arab. But give me Scottsboro versus um, Arab in the next round. Southside Gadsden, they're new to uh, this region down here, and they've got Hayden. And Hayden's a, a heck of a team. And uh, I think Hayden's going to pull an upset and beat Southside in the first round. I think Moody and Alexandria are only Cannon County team here. I feel like they're going to beat 
Um, Moody's going to beat Alexander. Unfortunately, Alexander just doesn't have. I mean, they've got Christian Knott, Fletcher, Swindle, Jay New, and Little Whitaker. But after, but then when you pair them up against, I mean, the rest of the guys against good guys from Moody, I just think it hurts them. And then Coach Hartzog, heck with team though. So give me Hayden over Southside and Moody over Alexandria. Ramburn gets a bye and Cleveland County gets a bye and then they play or wrestle, I should say. So we're gonna, that's the second round. So. Tallahassee and Pike Road, give me Tallahassee and St. James and Elmore County, give me St. James. So then that's going to set up St. James versus Tallahassee. Let's move forward. I've got A-Rab over Scottsboro, Moody over Hayden, Rambert over Cleveland County, and St. James over Tallahassee. And then, let's see, the semi should still last till next week, so we'll flip to 6A real quick and check out our Oxford Yellow Jackets, who are reigning, defending, back-to-back, Classic A dual state champions, and they are also back to back individual state champions. So, a lot of rings one, two, three, four for the Yellow Jackets. Give me Mae Jemison over Decatur, Fort Payne over Hartzell. Give me Homewood over, or excuse me, Gardendale over Homewood. Uh, ooh, I don't know about this. Give me Chelsea over Clay Chalkwell. Give me McAdory over. Ben Russell, give me Oxford over Northridge, give me Wetumpka over Gulf Shores, and Spanish Fort over Stanhope Elmore. Give me May Jemison over Fort Payne, Gardendale over Chelsea, Oxford over McAdory, and Wetumpka over Spanish Fort, and we'll have to save the rest for next week. Also, another big tournament coming up this weekend that's going to feature a lot of uh, guys from around the county, including our Welburn Panthers, is going to be None other than a tough, tough tournament out at St. Clair County. Whoo! I tell you guys, there's going to be some matchups. Um, there's going to be some teams in that tournament. It's going to be one of the toughest tournaments. And let's dig right into it real quick and let's announce the teams and uh, future some top guys. And then we will uh, sign off for the second week of Around the County. So again, I want all my wrestling fans to stay tight real quick where I'll pull up on the bracket. You can always look at this stuff on track wrestling. So it is the 2019 Jeremy Ragsdale Invitational out at St. Clair County. It's about 50 minutes down I-20 from where we are right now. So if you got a chance, make your way down there to watch our Walter Warren Panthers wrestle. They haven't, we haven't been to the tournament since 7th or 8th grade. I'm a senior now, so it's been about four, four or five years. All right, there's a bunch of teams, including, let's start with Alexandria, led by Christian Knott, who hasn't lost a match in about three years, four years, state champ, three-time committed to North Carolina State for wrestling, American Christian Academy, led by Jackson Elder, two, three-time uh, All-State placer at 106. Arab, they haven't lost a state championship in about four years. Asheville, led by Tyler Cluck, who's a smaller guy, not as popular as the others. Center point, I have no clue. Darlington, Georgia, I have no clue. Death or sorry, I don't know anybody that's as good for them. Nor Dora, East Limestone, Elmore County, Gordo, or Leeds. Leeds is led by Eli Sims. Montevello, Montgomery Catholic, Moody. You've got Corey Land, the reigning defending 106 state champ. Rashad Clark, a state placer. Daniel Vasquez. I mean, Parker Dodd, the list goes on for Moody. Mortimer Jordan has a heck of a team. So does Muscle Shoals, Pell City, Springville, and St. Clair County. Then you got Susan Moore. Or Walter Webb Panthers, led by Christian and Matthew. And then Weaver, who's got Caleb Allison and Cody Souter, two of the biggest names in the state right now. So, again, that's all for Around the County this week. We'll be back next week. We'll see the progress we've made on the county basketball tournament, see how Rambert and Alexandria and Oxford's doing in wrestling. Let's see how our guys placed at St. Clair County and a whole lot more next week on Around the County.